Right. We are going to go ahead and get started here. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Leah To. I am part of the product and solutions marketing team here at ServiceNow. So first off, thank you all so much for taking this hour out of your day to join us. We just have a few housekeeping items before I introduce our topic and our speaker. So just as a reminder, all lines have been muted on this call just to avoid any background noise. If I could ask everyone to please stay on mute for the duration of the session, that would be great. Um, that being said, we strongly encourage everybody to ask any questions you might have for our speaker um, by going ahead and use, utilizing the Q&A function that you'll see um, at the bottom panel of your Zoom webinar. So we'll have some time at the end of the session to have some of those questions answered live. Um, so please stay until the end. And finally, this webinar will be recorded um, and shared on our ServiceNow community page. Um, so please make sure to check that out in the coming days. Um, and there are also a bunch of other amazing webinars on demand. So highly recommend um, you check that out. All right, so kicking off our topic for today, we have an amazing special guest here with us um, from Dell Technologies. Um, he'll be diving into the journey of how um, Dell has implemented a legal front door to just increase efficiencies across their organization. So quickly in the session today, our speaker may cover some forward-looking statements as part of their roadmap. So just wanted to include our safe harbor statement here. Um, this is just to notice that any of those forward-looking messages and statements are subject to change. And as a reminder, today's session is a part of an event series we have here at ServiceNow called Live on ServiceNow. So we have and will continue to host webinars just like this one through um, this awesome series. So for the schedule of any upcoming events, um, please take a second to scan this QR code here or um, a member of my team will be dropping a link um, in the chat for your convenience. So without further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce our speaker for today's session. Um, Chuck Breath comes from the legal operations team over at Dell Technologies. And if any of you also had the opportunity to attend our annual conference uh, that happened in Las Vegas this past May called Knowledge, you might already be familiar with him. He led an amazing session there. So we're so excited to have him back with us today. And with that, I will hand it over to Chuck. Hi, thank you. Thank you, Leah. Good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining. Excited to talk to you today. Um, and we've got some really good content coming up. Just a little bit about me. So been in the technology space, implementation space, and project management space for over 25 years. I've been in the ServiceNow space for since the Ber Berlin release. So just over 12 years now. And um, you know, really been involved in ServiceNow for the past 12 plus years both on the customer side and the, the partner side, and, and back on the customer side again. So I've been with Dell. Um, I'm in the legal operations department at Dell as a program manager, just strictly concentrating on ServiceNow for legal operations at Dell. So I've been with Dell for about two and a half years and um, strictly focusing on legal service delivery with for our, our internal and external customers. Okay. So we get to the, so a little bit about what we're going to cover today. So I'm going to cover some similar topics to what I talked about at, at Knowledge for those who were able to see it at Knowledge, but really interesting to talk about our, our journey. I'll give a little some background on the journey, um, some of the really the planning, implementation, results, benefits, some of our future plans, and we'll have some questions at the end. But really, as we go through it, I want to highlight some of the, the lessons learned um, you know, that we've learned at Dell from, you know, implementing legal service delivery and uh, growing with it over the past four years. So let's start off, I want to dig in a little bit to where we started from. So just some couple of areas I want to talk about here. So for those who might not be familiar with, um, I know we probably have some folks on the call who are already using legal service delivery, but others that might be looking at it or are fully familiar with it. So the legal service delivery module, of course, is built is built on the ServiceNow platform, and 
to make use of all the best features of the, of the platform while incorporating specific functions for legal that assist with legal operations and the delivery of, of, of legal services. So I'd say back in 2018, our uh, senior vice president of legal operations, I think, you know, had the thought and sat down with sat down with ServiceNow and Deloitte, our, our partner that was helping us with it, um, say, hey, we really need help with you know legal, you know, and we're already a ServiceNow customer. So I think that's where, the, from my understanding, when the conversation started to get legal service delivery module implemented with ServiceNow, and then so from that conversation, I think ServiceNow implemented, created the module, and then in 2020 they'll implement it. Um, and, and we implemented, and that's really, you know, four years ago where we were a lot using, we were using a lot of SharePoints. We had SharePoints for multiple practice areas. Um, as you can imagine, a lot of emails, a lot of disparate systems, spreadsheets, uh, and they'll be in a global organization, a lot of information, you know, various silos, um, you know, that had, were, that were ripe for bringing into a, a single system, um, for for efficiency. So as we started, and you know, with the with the you know being customer one in that first iteration, we you know if you think about the, the crawl walk one run, I think we started off in a slow jog, <laughs> proceeded to a fast jog, and so what we started with is you know for the various practice areas globally, we started implementing and uh, and putting in um, you know, intakes for those areas. To where we were doing it, and so and what was happening is, is so we, we built those intakes to suit the you know the, to get out of SharePoint and and suit those practice areas. So as we grew with it and our increase started going, that's when we started. Okay, well, hey, how can we you know keep taking advantage of all the nice, cool features that ServiceNow is bringing out with with the with the the ongoing releases of the, of, of the product? So I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. Um, as we go, just a little bit about the landscape. So we do support multiple practice areas. So we have practice areas, you know, you know, the, all the typical ones, you know, sales, privacy, um, you know, ethics and compliance, corporate, government affairs, uh, and so we have right now we have forty plus intakes um, on the request management side, um, and we'll talk more about that. So eighty percent of legal is using um, it. Uh, uh, You'll hear me refer to it as my legal. So that's our our implementation of service now legal service delivery. We refer to it as my legal. So we have 80% usage right now, and that's increasing. And you know, supporting 120,000 employees at Dell and close to 500 legal professionals within our organization. So if we just calling out a, a couple of numbers, so we, we you know we insights is certainly very important to like take a look at, at usage and you know looking for areas for improvement. So just a couple of ones that were unique. So we, we we've seen in the past year we've seen nineteen thousand unique visitors to our portal site, and we're you know we're, we're averaging about twenty five thousand requests a year right now with that number um, rising. Just in Q one this past year. We did, a, and I'll talk a little bit more about this as well. We did a, a I call it a re-implementation. So, you know, as I mentioned, we started in 2020 and then the product progressed quite a bit. So we had some things that we wanted to go back and, you know, get get back to more of the, the out of the box. We had some customizations that we wanted to, to, um, to undo so we could get to the out of the box. So we could take advantage of the new features that were coming out. And that's what we've done. And 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 we in partnership with with ServiceNow and our um, IT delivery folks at Dell, we we did a reimplementation this past year, and in January rolled that back out. And and just looking at Q1 numbers after that reimplementation, our we've um, you know our legal requests have significantly gone up um, year over year in quarter for, for Q1. So. One of the particular areas I'm going to concentrate on today is sales. So sales, obviously, you know, vital part of, of, of Dell's business. And so we have, you know, in legal sales is one of the areas that I personally, you know, personally work with a lot. And I want to talk a little bit more about how, you know, from the global standpoint that we were able to help 
sales uh, globalize and put some efficiencies in place with the legal support model. So, and, you know, we'll talk about some multiple intakes in, you know, and then really some things around, you know, you know, with the regions and specific business units, how we were able to help that. And then just a little bit about the platform. So right now, you know, with legal service delivery, it's, of course, made up of multiple modules. The primary modules that we're using are legal request management, legal matter management, which we just started using. And of course, we, we're using the, the platform knowledge management as well. And, you know, also are evaluating and looking at several of the practice area applications like uh, investigations and, and things like that, that we're using simple contracts and migrating into contract management pro right now, which we'll talk more about. And then um, just to, you know, really making use of the knowledge management feature as well. And we'll talk more about that and how that's helping with self-service and, and uh, user experience as well. So let's talk a little bit more about where some of the challenges that we had. Um, I mentioned customizations. So the beginning that we start that we start being customer customer one and that we started early, um, you know, we we did build some unique things into this the, our practice area intakes, um, and which worked well. But as we started going and we wanted to get more globalized and consistent across there, we we found some things that we wanted to undo is really around maybe assignment rules and mapping of requests and things like that. So what we did is really worked with ServiceNow and worked with our, our Dell IT partners to go in and, and take advantage of, you know, features within the system, the, the core system of ServiceNow, especially around assignment rules, uh, workflows and things like that, that allowed us to get back to that out of the box and follow those to really help alleviate that technical debt. So where we, you know, wouldn't be, you know, run the risk of, you know, if we updated an area, you know, one particular field in one area, then it might break something on another area. So that's one thing that we did there. The other one's challenge is we had some complex intakes. So what we found is that we were, you know, early on, we might have been asking a lot of questions to our customers, you know, around the legal request. So what we did is from a business process standpoint is when we went back and did the re-implementation is, is really talk to our our legal customers and say, hey, what what is, you know, from a user experience side while supporting the legal experience, what is the best way that we can interact with the customer, that, you know, which is, we'll say it's a sales customer, you know, ask an account rep to, you know, a minimum set of questions that are going to be, you know, still effective in answering their question without, um, you know, without being too complex. So we were able to do that and that, that's, that's helped quite a bit. And also, you know, are or things that we can, you know, standardize across or, or, you know, make use of integrations. Um, and efficient workflows was another one, you know, where are we routing to too many teams or where are we routing to, you know, have too many approval steps. So that's another thing that we took a look at from the, the process point of view that we were able to go in and, you know, make make some adjustments to our workflows and we still do that for, through our you know continuous service improvement model that we're that we're looking at continuously to say like you know where, where can we make improvements and then you know with these challenges one of the things that you know we were running across is we weren't able to easily scale the platform as needed with you know as a, a lot of you've probably seen over the, you know with the, the multiple releases that come out each year from service now and, and legal service delivery there's been some really great stuff that's come out. And in order to take advantage of that, you know, things like matter management and, and the new council center, we had to get back to a, you know, in line with, with, with the out of the box, with, with the updated architecture. And, you know, and so we could take advantage of, the, of those features. So really, you know, and then our overall thought process is, you know, how do we improve the user experience and the legal team experience? And, you know, that those two items, you know, really guide us in how we have developed the system and continually to maintain and improve the system. So let's talk a little bit about the, you know, what we did planning wise implementation um, to make the improvements. So, and I'll, I'll pepper in a couple of, you know, lessons learned as we, as, as we went through too, that might be helpful. 
So what we wanted to do is, um, you know, globalize and, and optimize our intakes. So some of the key areas that really helped us are, you know, first the govern the governance side. So put in a, a set of governance items to where we could, you know, manage, you know, the, the type of fields that we're using, the type of intakes, what you know, you know, the consistency of intakes across, um, you know, the, 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 the even down to the notification level. You know, or, you know, our notifications were, you know, we had different notifications for each for each area for each intake. So we 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 added some consistency there, and it's really helped from a maintenance standpoint as well, um, and really getting folks back in the tool and you know and getting things through in a an efficient manner. So we, you know, I mentioned getting back to out of the box, the notifications, you know, the standards and field definitions, and making use of, uh, you know, the, the mantra which a lot of folks use: configuration versus customization. So, you know, so we really work with, you know, with our customers now when we have new requirements coming in, to, you know, to really counsel them and work with them and make recommendations on, you know, avoiding customizations, but you know, go with configurations, um, you know. For, for best practice. So th then again, you know, I mentioned this as well, we really wanted a consistent approach for our intakes. So the standard fields for a unified experience. So right now, and we'll see an example of it here in a little bit to where we're having, you know, our, the simple things like a requested for, you know, we always have a request, we always have requested for, and we have a, a location field that's, that's standard across all our intakes. So. So there wouldn't be a different user experience from intake to intake. And making use of that, we've added knowledge deflection, which is a standard feature with, with ServiceNow um, on the, you know, on the core side. So, you know, in, whereas when somebody starts typing in a description on the intake it, and it sees some keywords, it will make suggestions of knowledge articles. And so we've started using that and that's helped a lot as well. So somebody gets into it gets into the request, they start typing it, and then there's some suggested knowledge articles that might solve their issue, issue or answer their question. They, they, can, um, they, they can review that article and not have to submit the request. So that's, that's been really good. And then making use of you know, features, we'll talk a little bit more about metrics in a little bit. Council Center workspace is a big part, and I'll talk a little bit about that coming up uh, within, the, within that collaboration. Um, it's been really huge for us. And then we're starting to make use of mat the matter management module as well. And then the core data, and we've talked a little bit about this, you know, this really, you know, upgrading to the latest architecture for legal service delivery. And, you know, one thing I'd suggest too is that we've we spent a lot of time on, and I think it's very important, is the, um, you know, reviewing the legal service delivery um, methods and, you know, especially around, groups and roles. So when when setting up our groups, we really want to make sure that our groups had access to the right things. You know, you know, obviously in legal, there's going to be things that, you know, aren't available to everybody. Um, you know, employment law or HR, you know, is not going to be able to, you know, not everybody's going to be able to see that. Um, so we don't want, you know, we, we want to make sure that's locked down there and making use of the user criteria within ServiceNow and within the legal service delivery module to help with that. And then making sure folks have the right role. You know, are they, you know, we have the fulfillers, you know, we have the report users in this. And it's really, I, you know, really recommend spending a little bit extra time just assure, making sure that your teams, you know, that you're thinking about the the um, the group structure and the roles that go with those groups. And it really, I think, will help in, in the long run. And then one of the other areas that we're really concentrating on right now is, too, is we have a, we have, Quite a quite a few knowledge articles, which has been good, and we and we keep increasing those um, as you know as we get it from our practice areas. But really paying attention to the the the, the metadata and the categorization around those articles for searchability, because that's you know one of the you know the frequent user um, customer feedback things that we get are the searchability of articles like a, a sales playbook or or whether it's internal resource or an external resource. And you know, this, so we've really been working hard on our our metadata and tagging of knowledge articles to make it easier to search not only for the 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 requester and, or the customer side, but also within the legal op side as well, where they can you know where the legal team member might be using the counsel assist feature that we'll talk about in a little bit um, to to look for knowledge articles. 
And then lastly, the the assignment rules. So assignment rules have really been in the workflow have really been important for us as well. So you know whether you know we, we talked about the group structure. So we you know we might have work that come in that might be so maybe it's a named account. So we we know there's a direct assignment there. But otherwise, it might go to it's it's going to go to an assignment group. That assignment group can go you know by the type of work we can we might assign it you know based on the global location it's going to or the type or the um, or other factors. We can we can we can easily route that to the right spot, and then also we have some folks that some teams that are also doing a, a triage methodology to where you know a request comes into a group a, a smaller group of team members that will look at it and see if they can answer the question first. It might be a group of paralegals or it might be a group of contract admins that first look at it um, and, and if they can answer it, they'll answer it and you know and if not they'll they'll get it assigned to the right legal counsel. So one of the one of the really exciting examples I wanted to talk about was and I mentioned earlier I'll talk about is sales. So uh, we you know we had, we had global sales legal support with Dell and with that when we first implemented and as we implemented over our first couple of years we had um, intakes for each regionalized intakes. So so we had six regionalized intakes just supporting sales. Um, we, you know, we had one in North America, we had EMEA, APJC, and L Latin America. And, you know, we had, you know, maybe one for channel and OEM. So what we did with our re-implementation is looked at all those. And we talked a little bit about, you know, working with the business and looking at the business process rules and okay, how can we consolidate and globalize those? So we took that, we used that governance and uh, rules that we put in place, worked with the teams, and brought those six intakes into one intake. And this is the one that we rolled out in January. And it's really made for a great user experience for the, the, the our sales customers on, and, and also our, our legal fulfillers as well. So with that one intake, so we have, we, you know, of course it makes it a lot easier to maintain one intake versus six. And, but it also gives them the consistency to where we have a, a unified global experience right now for that particular intake. And we're doing that with other, uh, under other intakes across our practice areas as well. So I just real quick, wanted to show an example of a uh, of, of one of our intakes. And this is very high level, but just to kind of point out some things that are standard that were really helpful and, and it's really simple. Um, you know, we're real, you know, by simplifying it, we're, it wasn't hard because we really just followed you know, some of the out of the box standards or standards that you might, we might see on ITSM or HR um, with, with ServiceNow. So this is a, you know, a deal and opportunity support intake to where we have, you know, just a requested for, you know, just re really simple. And, you know, we see across service now to where, you know, the user can it defaults to themselves, but they can change it to somebody else if they're requesting on behalf of somebody else. Location, location is key for us on, on support, you know, on maybe particular questions that we're asking or, you know, particular support types or, you know, or, or other, or other similar items. So a, if a requester would say, I'm in the United States, but I'm actually need support in the United Kingdom, I could change that. And then that way we know that, you know, when it's routed, we're right to that UK team in this particular example. And then, you know, then it can have dynamic topics and subtopics. And then once we get there, you know, we, there might be, be just a handful of other fields that, that we ask data on, but really, really our goal was to keep this as, simple as possible so we can have that good user experience to where it's not a not a burden having to fill out an intake form for our customers. The watch list has been has been key for us as well. Another out of the box feature just really you know gives the, the requester the ability to add watchers or you know people to keep you know notified of the status of the ticket or the request and you know get copied on the on the communications. And then in that describe your request we talked a little bit about earlier turning on that knowledge deflection feature. So, you know, they start typing in things, you know, I'll give an example, NDA. NDA is one of our, um, you know, a very popular question within our, 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 our for, you know, coming into legal ops and we have a certain area where, you know, NDA is supported, but, but you know, that, that question for NDA gets asked across multiple intakes. So we want to be sure to get them back to the right NDA side. So if they start typing it in here, they'll see the, um, you know, the links in the, um, you know, or knowledge articles related to NDA to get them to the right spot. So, 
So yeah, so just a couple of examples there. And then also, you know, including, you know, other deflection opportunities, you know, links to related article, knowledge articles related to this intake, so, you know, have those on the intake form itself. And then also related knowledge is a, you know, additional option. So we really want to be able to give the user, you know, the ability to have, if it's, if they're self-service opportunities, to give them the ability to be able to self-serve and, uh, and see some of those things before they have to submit the request. So from the, the legal fulfiller side, the, this, this is the um, uh, legal workspace, and this is a generic version from, from a um, personal developer instance, but I wanted to talk about this a little bit because it's really important to us. Um, we, we did, so this is the updated legal workspace that came out a couple of releases ago. We just ourselves at Dell upgraded to it and um, in January when we did the new rollout. So this is the, you know, the legal counsel center in the, in the workspace view. But it really gives this, you know, the legal fulfiller and the legal teams a single pane or single spot to go to help, you know, manage the work and do the work. You know, whether it's, you know, it starts off at the, you know, the dashboard widgets. So, you know, what what, what somebody's work is by group um, has a configurable workspace a aspect of it, which we're really are working right now and excited about taking advantage of to where. Different teams can have different views based on the audience um, versus everybody having to see the same thing, which is which is going to be good since we have such a diverse team across practice areas and really gives them a once, you know, a spot to come in and do several things. You know, see the, you know, see what re requests are out there for their team or their groups, um, what work that they personally, that team member personally has, and then actually work the request. So if they were, example here, this are, are working a request, they might come in and see it. Um, and, you know, work the request and, you know, interact with the customer and, and, and close it out. But a couple of things I wanted to point out here that we've really been um, making use of and, and know we're going to make continued use of that's been really helpful for us to manage requests are over there on the left side, that collaborators feature. That's been really good because what this does is, is it gives our team members the ability to add other team members to the request without having to reassign the request. So, and it, it can be multiple folks and it can be across, it can be across areas. So let's say somebody on legal sales needs somebody from legal services to, you know, to, to help answer a request. They can add them here or, or in the, maybe Dell Financial Services needs to be added to it. They can add folks here and then those collaborators would have the same permission set or same ability as the, the assigned to person would. And that's been really helpful because Previously, what, we're, what we were having to do is to transfer or to move that request manually over to a different department um, or practice area. But this allows it to keep, you know, within this, the, the, the correct request and make use of it and, you know, really helps with reporting visibility and, um, and the, the efficiency along with that. So the, the, in the middle there, the compose area, you know, the ability to communicate back and forth with um, you know, whether it's internally with the work notes, the private or the comments to the customer is good. The, the activity log is really key for us to see the audit log of, you know, the interaction back and forth and changes. And then the council assist over on the right is something I mentioned earlier about knowledge that we're using. But this is really, you know, the, where the uh, the legal counsel or the or the legal team member supporting the request has the ability to go in and, you know, not only search for not, you know, knowledge articles that might be helpful in answering the request, but also other, you know, uh, they can look at other requests, they can look up old requests, they can look up links. So it's been really helpful here. And, um, and this is one of the exciting areas that I think we'll definitely see in the future, um, you know, where, you know, we've you've probably heard about the, the analysis. I think legal is working right now, um, you know, on, uh, down the road in the future release and, and expanding that with some AI functionality, which we're really looking forward to seeing down the road. And then one other thing, and this is have it right there to the very right, little, little box there, but the, the email templates. The email templates are something else that we're really excited about and we're, we're starting to look at right now on how we can best use it. But there's the ability to do email templates for standard responses. And we're really getting some great feedback from our team members that this is going to be really helpful for them, you know, especially if there's, you know, with the number of requests that we get in, there might be some, you know, there might be a standard response that somebody finds that they're sending, every, you know, a lot. So, you know, by having, you know, the ability to have 
you know, by practice area or by intake type have, you know, standard email responses there for the fulfiller to be able to quickly use and add and make a part of this record would be, is, is really going to be helpful for us. And one thing I didn't mention on here that's also been really helpful for us is the email functionality um, to where we can, you know, an email can be started from within council center and then the, the interaction with, with the, the, the customer would all be captured within here. So it's not taking place outside of the system, outside of the system. And one other thing too, that we're really, and this is one area I'm very excited about myself, kind of do a, lot, do a lot with it, is we've really started the leverage and, and the, the ability to automate documents within, within, within legal. Uh, you know, whether it's simple agreements or, or letter support letters, um, you know, you, we using the simple contracts module right now and we're migrating over to the, the contract management pro to help with this. So for example, you know, and let's put a couple examples here that we might have. So we have some channel support letters, a manufacturer authorization form, simple one page form that, you know, that, and that we might have six versions of depending on where it is in the globe or, or language choices. Um, it could be multiple versions, but there's, but the, the, the features within that, that contract management pro um, simple contracts, both have the, the ability to manage template rules and manage those templates. And one of the things that, that I think that I really like about it is it really, it, a, a power user can really manage that. We don't have to go to IT to, to manage our templates. We can, you know, we, you know, we see a lot of changes to templates. We can easily do that ourselves on our, on the My Legal team and work with our customers there, even the template rules or, you know, add in blocks based on, you know, let's say I have an agreement in France that has an extra paragraph that the agreement Italy doesn't have, um, you know, you know, incorporate that logic into it. And then, you know, have the, you know, if there's various languages supported. Um, so that's been, that's been really helpful for us in an example. So we just implemented this past, um, this earlier this year on, on in the media for some of these channel support ledgers I'm, I'm showing here. But we had one particular legal counsel um, that I was talking to that was getting 35, 40 requests for a manufacturer authorization form um, via email a month. And, and, and they were having to manually create those. So this is all, so this, with this, you know, automation and those, you know, those list, low risk, self-serve letters, those are automated now. So that they're not having to do that. So, and we were so really working right now on growing this and converting other um, letters and agreements into this, this model as well. And then, you know, also, and, and but this could be both the case for, I mentioned self-service, you know, we, whether it's a digital signature, but also with the Adobe sign. So right now we, we've just started rolling out um, agreements with the Adobe sign as well, um, to, you know, and taking advantage of, the, of those type things to, to where we just rolled out one that has a, you know, a, a signature and a counter signature and takes advantage of some of those. And then it, you know, and then the agreement comes back and it's part of the record. And so that's, so we're really excited about what we're doing with the document request and, um, you know, are really looking forward to exp expanding that with, you know, as we go forward. Then also, I did want to touch on too on the um, dashboards and metrics. So, so I know this is a pretty universal topic, but it, it's really important to us. Really important to our customer base um, and the clients that we support. And if we think we talked, I talked earlier about the legal counsel workspace. And one of the nice things about the new legal counsel workspace is it also brought in the the the, 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 the performance analytics into the now the platform analytics into into the same workspace. So you know, there's a there's the ability to quickly get into, you know, the, you know, the, to get into the, an, the analytics center and, you know, any dashboards or data visualizations can be created there and then give our, our team members quick access to, you know, reports that they need or, you know, new things that they want to create, whether it's, um, you know, around legal operations or whether it's, you know, trend analysis with some of the performance analytics. And I would recommend taking a look. Um, I know it's small over there on the right, but the, you know, some of the, there's the, the platform, the performance analytics legal pack that really has some good indicators there that we're, that we're making use of right now too, that, um, you know, work with, with on legal requests and legal matter and some of the other tables. Um, so we're really, are 
also, you know, excited about, the, you know, what we're working on right now with, you know, to help our customers to give them more insight because they, you know, certainly need it for, for planning and, um, and, you know, transparency to what's going on with the team and the, the, where, the, where they support. And it's, so we know it's going to be helpful and has been helpful to do that. And so we're working right now to figure out, you know, what are the best way to do the filters? You know, we're, we, you know, we have a lot of units, you know, I'm thinking about our sales side. We have a lot of uniqueness on the delivery model. So, you know, with variables and, you know, how do we get those variables in and easy um, to maintain um, And you know, that, that consistency I talked about on intakes earlier across intakes is really helping us now, especially with reporting because we're not, we can report globally, uh, uh, you know, for example, report global sales versus now, you know, prior we're having a look at sales regionally because they, they were using different fields and different things. But now we have that global view. So that's another example of where that globalization and that consistency across intakes has really helped us on this side. Okay, let's talk a little bit about results and benefits. So some of the things we realized, I talked to, you know, I hit on a few of these earlier, but really, you know, enhanced efficiency. So, you know, because we've, you know, improved our, our intakes and added the, added some of those, you know, those, those standardized features, you know, and, 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 and then we're able to upgrade to the, the new legal counsel workspace really have helped, you know, smooth things that keep things running smoothly and, and, you know, with, with the, with the metrics and the reporting that we were just talking about also are always looking for new areas to, you know, where we can improve efficiency as well. You know, if, you know, just, you know, analyzing, um, you know, the types of requests that are coming in or, you know, things that might come in, you know, that come in through a, a legal inquiry, you know, more of a general legal inquiry, you know, or other things that we can like change a topic or, or additional knowledge articles we can create, um, you know, other self-service opportunities that we can create. So we're always working on that. And then, you know, that leads into the enhanced self-service. So we've increased, we're increasing our knowledge articles. We're increasing, you know, by the meta tagging in the search, you know, and the, the knowledge deflection, you know, and then the document, um, legal document delivery that we were talking about a, mo a moment ago, really enhanced our self-service um, items as well. And one of the big benefits too, in the, is, is, you know, we're back to being scalable for the iterative growth and be able to take advantage of all the, this, you know, the, the cool features that are coming out with legal service delivery, um, in, you know, and be, in, be set for the future. So where we can keep, taking advantage of that and not having to worry about, it. oh, is, is it going to work with what we did? But we, so we, we know it will now. And then going back to the user experience, both on the user side and the legal side, um, definitely seeing a better experience and getting feedback as to that, um, you know, with the, the, whether it's legal counsel center on the, on the, um, on the legal side or the, 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 the simplified intakes or globalized intakes on the, on the user side. And then, as we talked about and on the number side as well, our utilization is going up. So, so we, you know, we're up to 80 percent and we've seen that grow and our number of requests continually are growing as well. So this, you know, we're talking about that sales one that we, you know, this that we were talking about earlier where we globalized the regional ones, you know, this quarter over quarter for that one sales one, we've you know seen that forty percent um, growth since that new intake went live. So I did want to point out that that doesn't mean it's we have forty percent more work because the, the work was happening. It was just this might not have been happening within within the platform. I've been happening in the email, might have been happening in the SharePoint, but now we have it in that centralized spot within legal service delivery and are continually adding there to where the legal teams and the legal management have the ability to go in and manage and have visibility to that work and get in that work in and out. And then also from the customer side, you know, then be able to, you know, like service now is so good about be able to track the status of a request and then interact with, with the team, you know, from, from that request, you know, I think they really appreciate, you know, having it in one spot. So I think, I think what we're going to continue to see is we're going to have, you know, we know we're going to have more and more of our customers utilizing. Um, we're going to see it, you know, we're really concentrating right now on increasing our self-service opportunities, whether it's, 
you know, analyzing, you know, or the new knowledge articles that we can add that would help either our customers or even in our internal legal side. Um, and then, you know, talking about earlier, the automated letters we will continually to add, you know, additional letters and agreements and automate that and, and take that burden off, you know, our legal counsels as well, where, where possible. And then really, you know, we'll have more, we know we'll have more legal team members fulfilling requests within the platform, which gives us, you know, gives us a centralized spot, but also, you know, makes it a lot easier for reporting and visibility and that transparency that we talked about. And then really, you know, we expect, we expect that growth to continue and, you know, it, you know, really see legal service delivery, the, this module our, or our my legal module as with service now as, as our legal front door to get for, for our legal team. So a little bit was just real quickly on our so what we have coming up in the future. So, we, so really, you know, it's going to be our legal. We talked about the legal front door, but it's you know it's be a single point of entry for us. You know, whether they're, you know, coming in and they, they're looking for a knowledge article or they need a request or they're going somewhere else. You know, we're we're using that as a legal front door to get them to where they need to go. Um, it's you know we're going to centralize communications from within here. You know, have that all within there so we can manage that and have visibility to it. Integrations to, talked a little bit about it, but we you know we're looking working right now. You know, say on the sales side, integrating with Salesforce. So we you know an account rep puts in a, a request, and we can get the Salesforce information that we need to go along with it to help with that. Um, and then you know continue to standardize the request and you know make sure that we're following our governance rules. Really excited about. You know, and that's the big topic these days is AI, um, but taking advantage of some of the things coming out with AI that are already there with AI. Um, we're working right now on, um, you know, re, re rolling out our virtual agent and taking, making use of the AI search methodology that, that's there now. And, look, you know, looking forward to, you know, the continued AI um, capabilities are, that come out from ServiceNow. And then we talked about the, the, um, the email templates, but also that, that, it's really excited about that smoother cross department collaboration using that collaborator feature. So we're, we're not shuffling things back and forth and, um, you know, able to just make that a lot more of a, an efficient process. And then lastly, you know, really want to touch, say a couple more things about, about our front door. So right now for we, in, in fact, this coming Monday, we are we are rolling out um, the our my legal legal function will be rolling out on Team Member Center. So our Adele IT our IT function and HR function and security function have been on Team Member Center for a little bit. But legal, we've been working we've been working hard and you know working making sure our taxonomy is right and have every, all the structure right with the topics, subtopics, and and our knowledge content. So we are rolling out um, the Team Member Center. Employee Center for legal um, next week. So with that, it's really going to give our client that an, an enhanced um, entry point or legal front door to where they can come in and have the you know the ability to quickly get where they need to get um, the search the searchability with that AI search uh, across all the Dell platforms, um, you know, or especially within legal to get to where they need to get, whether it is locked down just for legal eyes or whether it is you know for our customer supporting documentation as well to get them to the right intake. Um, we're going to make use, uh, we're making use of, we're getting a lot, moving a lot of things out of SharePoint um, into, into service now. Um, really, you know, within Team Member Center, there's the ability to do microsites. So we're, we're leveraging microsites for certain areas that have content to where we can, get, you know, have that nice user experience with the content there, but also that is related to you know, the featured catalog items or the featured knowledge to really give that unified experience for the customer coming in to get them to the right spot. Um, and then, you know, to be able to personalize that experience as well based on what they're looking for. And and so we're, we're excited about that and we're, um, you know, rolling that out and work, working with all our partners, right, our clients right now to, to make sure that um, we get the word out on that and, and the change management of that as well. So that's going to give us, you know, the, the ability to do some of the things that we talked about, that streamlined collaboration, the, the frictionless service and, and those type items. So really excited about that. And I think that's 
I think that's going to bring us to the end here, Leah, on, on slides. Awesome. Well, thank you again, Chuck, for um, just sharing your wealth of knowledge with us today. It's always amazing to kind of hear from someone who's actively using our solution and understanding what your journey has looked like, um, what are the challenges that you faced um, in order to in implement your solution. So hopefully everyone was able to take away something insightful from this past hour. We actually have a question um, for you, Chuck, from one of our members in the webinar. Um, do you already have an existing integration with another platform, for example, a CLM? So, so, so we we do not, we're working on we're working on one right now. So, so for in particular for the CLM, so we we, we do have a a CLM platform that we're that we're working on. Uh, we're setting the integration up with right now, um, and then we're also integrating with other items such as um, Salesforce. So we have an inter we use our we use Salesforce, and we have some other internal systems too that we're that we're integrated with so we are leveraging integrations so that we can make that part of our legal front door so let's say that they came in they come in through our front door and you know as we evaluate the request we see okay okay this this needs to go to a particular system so it, it could that it, it could pass through that integration to the clm in this particular in that particular case or whether we're or whether we bring data or send them data back and forth with salesforce or something like that. And what about document management or SharePoint? That was another question on top of that. Yeah. So we're so for for document management, we, we do we do have a we, we have a, a, a contract repository that we use with um with Knowable and then we that we you know that we that we have the ability you know through other systems to, to pass that data to. Um, but we don't have we're we're Right now, for the for the documents that we're doing, the the automation letters and things like that, we are maintaining those and storing those in in uh, on the platform right now on ServiceNow platform, and which has worked for us as well. And that there's you know there's other areas like there's an agreement. I know we're we're going to be sending um, a URL back to Salesforce, so you know, the document will reside in in, in ServiceNow, but the U there'll be URLs available from Salesforce to get back to that document service now. So. Right now, the you know the this the the, the lower complex documents that um, that we're automating, we're we're keeping within ServiceNow. Awesome. Well, thank you again, Chuck. If there are any other questions that are coming in last minute, um, feel free to pop those in the Q and A panel. I'm just going to run through a couple resources that we have um, available for you all. Um, so these will be dropped. Um, in fact, my team members already dropped them into the chat. Um, so please go ahead and check them out. Um, obviously, our legal service delivery product page um, has a bunch of resources. We've got um, videos, demos, data sheets, all that you can um, imagine. And it's a great first place to start um, and understand a little bit more about um, our solution. And then other two um, assets that you will see on that product page include a, um, a white paper and a report that we've done with Gartner. So really highly recommend checking those two um, documents out. I think they can definitely shed a lot more information um, about not just ServiceNow, but just the legal landscape in general. Yes, if there aren't any other questions that we have for today, um, I'll go ahead and um, give everyone some time back. Thank you again, Chuck, and thank you all for joining us um, today. We can't wait to see you at our next upcoming webinars. Please stay tuned on our Live and Service Now community page. Um, we will be giving you all a lot of more great content um, shortly. Thank you. Thank you.